lectures expected. Uh, so uh, this will be one of that kind of a perspective for you. Uh, so this is a presentation. Are you able to see my screen? Can somebody respond, please? Sir. Okay. And my voice is clear. Sir, it is clear, sir. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. So um, I, I mean, I want to say that this is a change. So industry 4.0 is the unavoidable change which happens uh, periodically in any kind of a industry. So you know, change is un unavoidable and manufacturing industry is also not an exception to that. So you are seeing the change in current industry, like, you know, the education industry, e-commerce industry or uh, shopping industry. Similarly, this is a kind of a change that you will also see in uh, manufacturing industry. And this manufacturing industry change brings a lot of different changes and it encompasses them to give you a best service uh, as per your expectation. So what I'm trying to say is industry 4.0 is not a philosophy, uh, is, is a philosophy basically uh, that allows things to be done differently. So what you were doing or what you were seeing until now is the same thing that you will be seeing uh, with a different angle or different, different perspective. Every revolution that uh, revolution has put people's intellect in test. So whenever this kind of a change happened, a uh, lot of people got worried about what kind of a career, what kind of a survival they will see in future. And they all, they were always worried how to you know, face this change. But what I'm trying to say is humanity's strong learning capabilities uh, you know, that evolved over a period has give us very good um, reason to fight with every change that we are seeing. So this I'm starting with this quote basically. Uh, and now I, I move on to the next uh, slide. So I want to thank you, uh, uh, AICT and Government Polytechnic Nanded uh, uh, College for you know, inviting me for this uh, lecture. And I want to uh, give a very special thanks to uh, Sakar Kare sir, who is my mentor. And um, I'm always in touch with him for last uh, 18, 20 years since I completed my diploma. And uh, his guidance is always you know, helpful for me in my career. And, and basically we exchange our thoughts. So he, I, I, I talk to him about what's happening in the industry and he talk about uh, what students are expecting, what, where they are lacking. So this is a very nice forum for me to, you know, uh, help Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Between education as well as industry. Yes, sir. You want to Thank ask you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sakal, sir, sir will join within 10 to 15 minutes, sir. He is engaging lecture. Okay, no problem. No. Okay, thank you. Uh, right, so what we are going to discuss today is uh, briefly about me. Uh, I'm, I'm going to explain about, you know, is there a real reason to worry about? And I will talk to you about how to make up a mind to face this change and industries, which are the industries getting affected because of this and where this opportunity and how to get ready. So Basically, I'm not going to talk about what you uh, listen last, you know, yesterday and today and probably with what you're going to hear, you know, in an another um, three or four days. So it will be a little different. Uh, this is a sort of a gist of everything, but it is then channeled with channeled to the uh, requirements of your students or the industry, what you will see in future. So this is a brief dis uh, about me. I think uh, sir has already talked about my current profile. So um, I'm, we know that I'm 37 years old. I, I have almost 18 years of experience in my career starting after diploma in 2002. Um, right now I'm a country manager and a business development head for India for a Jacobs vehicle system. Um, I'm basically from Maharashtra and um, RV, which is, uh, which is my hometown uh, in Vardha district. Uh, currently, I'm pursuing my MBA in, from Pune University. And previous to that, I have done BBA and BTA and Diploma Mechanical was my basic qualification. Um, apart from this, uh, I have done some certification courses, which uh, enable uh, me to learn new things about the world and this industry probably is uh, from IIM Ahmedabad. Uh, I have done uh, financial skills and strategic business decision making course. I have also done uh, one course from Harvard University USA on the negotiation mastery. 
For last 18 years, I have been working with the uh, automotive industry mainly. So I started my career with the uh, Tata Group of Industries and then I moved to Tata Motors. I was there for around five years and then in Cummins uh, Engines Company, I was for eight years. Uh, for three years, I was in Mahindra and Mahindra and the most recently I'm working in uh, Jacobs Vehicle System. So I'm heading some uh, global customers uh, from China, France, Brazil, etc. and uh, various uh, more, you know, locations like Japan uh, started in 2018. So my, my work domain has been always, you know, automotive engineering, sales and marketing, business development and manufacturing. Uh, I, I really love, uh, you know, motivational speaking. I, I interact with people. I brainstorm with, uh, uh, you know, youngsters for uh, new age technologies. I speak about career development and uh, networking and traveling is my hobbies, basically. So uh, with my job, I, I, I get opportunity to, to travel up, uh, across the world. I mean, I lived in US, I lived in France, uh, UK. Um, then uh, China, I mean, various countries for my business uh, work, I have to travel to these countries. And I, I really love traveling, uh, which is uh, actually the opportunity I got along with my job. And I do a lot of networking with the people across the globe. Uh, you will see my LinkedIn and you can understand, uh, you know, the kind of a uh, network I have across the industry in this. So moving on to uh, the next slide, what, what is that I'm not going to discuss about? So what I, uh, I mean, I saw the entire agenda of the uh, forum for uh, five, six days, and I realized uh, most of the people are very much, you know, technocrats and they have very good knowledge about the industry, uh, manufacturing industry particularly. And, uh, um, you know, they are going to discuss uh, uh, with you about various technologies that encompasses this industry 4.0 uh, maybe you know what was the industry zero industry 1.0 2.0 3.0 and how we arrived to 4.0 i i don't want to go into that kind of a discussion because i think uh, you must have got bored with that discussion already or maybe you will listen to that many more times so i do i want to stay away from that very basic discussion and I assume that all of you are already educated or graduated for that from that discussion. And now uh, I want to really understand what is a um, crisp or what is basically why we need out of this industry 4.0. So uh, this is all about, um, let me, okay. So uh, just want to tell you that I will be looking at the screen here because I am working on two screens. One screen, I have a, a Zoom open and I am displaying or projecting on the other screen. So if I'm not looking at camera, please don't mind. I am just referring to um, another screen, okay? So, all right, um, going back to my uh, slides. So what I want to do is basically I will, I want to brush up your mind. I want to, I want you to, you know, uh, basically want to scratch, scratch your head. Uh, what this uh, change is going to bring, and is it really that serious? We should be really worrying about. So, uh, the question is: Is there a reason to really worry about why we are worrying? Because we have some myths and you know, realities differentiation. We have some myths about the industry. We know that in the past, various changes that happened has created a, a disruption in the industry and a lot of people uh, lost their jobs. A lot of people found it difficult for the survival. And that is the reason I thought it is important to uh, basically um, discuss on this issue. So is it a real problem or is it a real reason to worry that there is a no job and there is a discussion? So I have both the thoughts. Uh, it may be yes or it may be no. Why it is yes? Because this is a, a big change. Uh, I would say 180 degree change that we say in the industry. A uh, lot of things are changing. Uh, although the basics are not changing, which we learned you know, over, over years, but a lot of new technologies are coming. Like you know, people might say that uh, we don't know how to work on software. There are a lot of softwares coming in, how to diagnose the vehicle, how to you know, handle the new age technology because we have been never worked with that. So 
for looking at this scenario yes uh, this is a uh, point of uh, worry but i would say no as well because our learning capability has immensely increased you know so uh, switching from our original uh, phone which we were using 10 20 years back wired phone we moved to um, you know uh, phones small phones nokia phones i would say and then now we are working with the smartphone so this transition happened in a very short time right so we are very good at learning new technologies so i don't think this disruption will really create the problem to all of us i mean um, now that your 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 basically faculty so probably when you are talking to your students uh, you will listen to them uh, with their you know worries that what kind of a situation we will be facing after getting graduated or after completing our diploma engineering so i think this is a scenario you, we need to exactly tell them that it could be yes or it could be no yes because this kind of a problems uh, are really difficult to handle and no because we have to be ready and we naturally have a tendency to get ready for such a situation so uh, every individual thinks about you know uh, having getting no job how to survive um, and how to you know live with the cutting uh, job uh, situations in globally so i'm going to talk to you about i mean uh, basically why this is not a real concern for us okay so here is a slide uh, that will talk to you about uh, the situation with the uh, growth of India. I have just uh, captured India and this is for last uh, 30 years basically, 30 or 40 years. So what was the situation? This is a per capita income growth of Indians uh, since you know 1986 is a plot basically. And this I, uh, I got it from IMF uh, website. Uh, this shows our per capita income income growth over a you know period of uh, 30 40 years and i want to highlight here is we have seen so many situations like you know world war 2 a recession in 2000 and 2008 and recently pandemic and a lot of new situations we we saw over last 100 years uh, i mean you we means the mankind has seen this situation i want to highlight here is basically in 2000, uh, there was a recession time, all of us know. Uh, in 2010, there was also a recession time. I want to relate this situation with the graph, which is showing the growth in GDP. Forget after 2021 or 2022, it shows, uh, you know, increasing graph. This is, this is not a, uh, this is not yet happened. So this is just a hypothesis that uh, it will grow. But think about this particular section of the graph. Um, I'm sorry about it. Uh, yeah, so think about this particular section where the graph has always gone up. So what I want to basically uh, tell you is in any situation, the mankind has always survived and all problems or calamities has given us new opportunities to handle the situation. So human always finds, you know, a new way to live and speciality of the mankind is basically we we always challenge the situation and we sir overcome that situation uh, right now there are other kind of a problem like pandemic and even in after the pandemic if you see the current situation the job market has grown i am not sure since you are sitting on the other side of the uh, education system uh, you might hear that there are less jobs in the pandemic but my personal view is we have a lot of new jobs open after the pandemic because uh, the whole world wants to, you know, get automized basically in every field. So in education system, in manufacturing system, in travel, in uh, logistics, all of these demands more and more people to work on uh, technology, work on automation, and that, that gives a huge demand for new jobs. So we need to understand that every pandemic or every calamity has actually given us a lot of enthusiasm to uh, create new opportunities and work for our betterment or mankind's betterment so this is the reason i have star marked these two uh, you know 2000 and 2008 situations so so every crisis taught us new way to work and live if you if you would have heard a stories after world war world war 2 
uh, we were always uh, told that World War II was a was no. one, one and two both basically. But after that problem, uh, everybody survived. Everybody, you know, uh, invented new things. Uh, I'm sure you will also hear this from other other faculties or lecturers about, uh, you know, in industry 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0, how it is evolved. So I'm trying to say that it is not a problem really it is not a reason to worry basically so every disruption has made us to you know learn new things or new things to survive and technology could not let us let the humans down so we got a computers in 90s late 90s at least in india and everybody was thinking probably it is a problem to us and how would i how would uh, you know we survive after getting such kind of a disruptive technology so you are, you are seeing now, you are more and more students have joined the industry. Uh, they are working on computers, they are working on machines, CNC machines, VMC machines, and various technologies they are adopt, they have adopted already in their day-to-day -day work. So there's no need to worry. We have a growing path for our um, uh, income, and it is always going to grow even in the future, although there is a lot of automation is expected in the industry. So I now come to a core part of my discussion. So why I discussed about the previous slides was basically I wanted to create a situation or I wanted all of you to bring on a table that what I am thinking is uh, not the general thinking basically. So uh, I want all of you to understand that this is not a situation to worry, but this is a situation to take it as an opportunity. Uh, once in a lifetime opportunity, basically, because the technology and everything is very easily available all across, right? So let us go to the career opportunities discussion in uh, 4.0 regime. So which are the industries that are affected because of this? I mean, you have seen a lot of this kind of uh, uh, logos on, you know, many websites. So more, more than uh, talking about individual logos, I will tell you probably which are new. So mobile and internet are very, uh, uh, I mean, everybody understands about this. Cloud technology is something new upcoming area in the industry. So cloud technology is whatever the data we are day to day uh, using, like, you know, we are interacting through Zoom now. So any data that we interact every day, any calls, any photographs, any, you know, WhatsApp communications, so they are all are connected right now with the cloud technology. Earlier, there used to be a huge servers located in India, in Singapore, and one in Europe somewhere. So there, there was a triple or double backup to every data storage so that, you know, in case uh, any one storage system get crashed, there is a backup data already available and your data will not lose. So it used to cost us a lot. So any company, let us say for the example of Tata Motors, it has a huge data of drawings and you know vehicle data, vehicle diagnosis data, and it will be localized on a India server or in Pune probably. And then one server will be sitting in Singapore and third server will be sitting in uh, somewhere in the Europe or US probably. So the cloud technology has brought the world closer and they don't need to invest in those server locations. So everything, all the data that is generated will be directly put on the clouds. So cloud technology providers are various people. And um, so I'm trying to say basically the cloud industry. So the 4.0 affects every industry. So I'm trying to say the software and automation industry. Uh, next gen uh, genomatics. So this is about you know medical science or life science. This our uh, 4.0 is also affecting that uh, part of the industry. Uh, advanced materials, so materials and um, all the um, substances that are used in day-to-day -day manufacturing industry, they're also getting because of the industry 4.0. Automation related works, advanced robotics, energy storage system, you understand about you know lithium ion batteries or uh, even in future, new kind of a batteries are coming. So advanced oil and uh, gas uh, recovery related works, internet of things, autonomous vehicle, 3D printing, renewable energy. So almost everything that we see day to day will be replaced by new technology. So that is going to create huge opportunities for everyone in the world. 
so we have to be ready we have to be upgrade we have to upgrade ourselves to meet that skills requirement that i am going to talk in later part of this uh, presentation but for now i think we what i was trying to say is this is a various opportunities or areas which are getting affected because of 4.0 and we need to be carefully choosing any right path to handle this situation so we have a right now automobiles uh, where i i bring my expertise for last 18 years i am aware that in 2000 or 2005 time uh, very few vehicle used to have you know ecus engine control unit or vehicle control units and now there is no way but every vehicle has to be equipped with ecu because most of the functions sensors they work with um, you know in sync because of the ECU uh, mounted on the vehicle. So it is important to understand that every industry is bringing new technology and that technology is always coupled with some kind of a automation, some kind of a, um, new technologies. That technology is actually a 4.0. So 4.0 is a word first uh, you know, discussed in 2011, you, you heard uh, that probably from some other speakers, but it was already there. So what we have started now is we are using more and more technologies around it, but we are just trying to name them as a, you know, industry 4.0 technologies, 3D printing. So some, I have seen 3D printing almost like, you know, 12, 13 years back in uh, Western countries, but it is now talked very widely in India. So 3D printing is not a, a surprise now to anybody in the, in, even in India, forget about world. So 3D printing will be a new opportunities all over uh, where this industry 4.0 will bring a lot of opportunities for us. Renewable energy, uh, everywhere this has been talked uh, uh, in all the forums. So renewable energy is something that is also getting affected because of industry 4.0. So, uh, I think we understood what are the areas where uh, industry 4.0 is going to affect our day-to-day uh, -day thinking, day-to-day -day working. So let us now uh, discuss about the job opportunities or um, or or how how to you know handle this uh, situation and how to overcome uh, this situation. So career opportunities. Sorry, uh, where is the job? So. Um, so where is the job? So the job is everywhere. Shopping, shipping, manufacturing, e-commerce, life sciences, transportation, health and industry, virtual reality, 5G, artificial intelligence, machine learning. So I'm trying to give you a perspective that industry 4.0 is bringing opportunity everywhere. This is not just about the technology and software, but it is also about mechanization of the systems, robotics of the system. Shopping industry will give you opportunity for connecting markets to the uh, buyers. It will also help you to understand where, which uh, thing is situated where and how to find out that, uh, uh, you know, whatever things you need. Shipping industry is bringing the world closer Earlier, we used to have, you know, uh, sea shipment separately, air shipment separately. So right now there are modular uh, uh, interconnected uh, shipments are also talked. So government is already taking uh, some stance on the connected shipping. So, you know, something is coming from China to say Chennai, then Chennai to Mumbai by train, and then Mumbai to, uh, let us say, Pune by uh, truck or bus, and then the last mile connectivity is also being talked. So this entire area is getting affected because of industry 4.0. So we are talking about where the job is. So job is basically in every, every link of that shipping or shopping or manufacturing. You see a lot, lot of robotics are happening everywhere. Uh, at least in the automotive industry, what I'm seeing is people are getting replaced in the manufacturing line, but people who are actually working to set up that manufacturing line is also a humans, right? So they are not a robot. Robot can work as a labor, but robot cannot work as a uh, you know human being who can bring its own talent to uh, generate the ideas. 
it can only perform for, for us, but it cannot, you know, uh, ideate something about uh, anything. E-commerce is a very upcoming and booming industry at the moment. Imagine e-commerce will not be working without the people and without any kind of automation in it. Uh, right now, you must be listening about drones uh, communicating or dispatching the uh, items to people. It will take some time, but at least right now, this has become a new opportunity for all of us. So it is not that drones will be replacing people for uh, courier, but it is, think about it like, you know, we have to discover those uh, um, drones. We need to uh, pack packaging and then dispatching, everything will be done by humans. So humans are also needed. So life sciences are the medical technologies, another upcoming industry where uh, industry 4.0 is really impacted uh, because earlier the uh, medical industry was mostly in the doctor's hand while now we have got every engineer uh, uh, who has you know worked in life science, he understands very well basically it is not possible without engineering to bring different kind of a, you know, invent different in equipments and help the uh, people in the healthcare industry to, you know, uh, make the diagnostic diagnosis as early as possible. Transportation industry where I, I am coming from basically, transportation industry is a biggest uh, change that we are seeing with the 4.0 uh, regime. So here, a lot of jobs are coming uh, throughout uh, in aviation industry, road transport industry, shipping industry, infrastructure industry, uh, trucking industry, automotive industry, I'm trying to say. So health and sports is also another area where industry 4.0 is uh, showing its uh, you know footprints. Artificial intelligence and machine learning, I think you know very well. So e-learning or the education programs are Another areas where industry 4.0 is uh, trying to uh, expedite the overall learning experience of the people or humankind. Uh, next, let us discuss individually about the particular area of uh, industry 4.0. Uh, from my expertise or from my background, I will be talking about manufacturing area and some part of a logistics as well. Uh, uh, let's go to next slide. Uh, right. So let us talk about manufacturing. So what is happening in the manufacturing at the moment? So this will industry 4.0, you must have seen a lot of, you know, at a lot of places on the internet. But what I'm going to talk to you about is basically how it is, uh, how it is impacting the industry 4.0 uh, situation. So at right now, uh, um, let us take example of my company. Basically, we have a, a manufacturing plant situated in US. Uh, it is close to New York and Boston. Another plant is in uh, China. And uh, we are looking to set up a plant in uh, India as well. And one, one more plant is there in the Europe, Czech Republic. So think about the connectivity of this various system. We get orders across the world. Okay. So when the orders are coming from overall uh, uh, world, it, they need to be accumulated to a right people who are from sales and marketing, probably me. I, I study that data and I, we create a demand to our manufacturing people. Then they start talking to their logistics people or their suppliers. So the industry is getting connected. So earlier it was like, you know, it was a manual work and people wanted to, you know, put place an order on probably phone or email. So industry 4.0 brings a new uh, way to handle this situation. Like, you know, if the information is collected, the, 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 the requirement should directly go to supplier. The supplier will have to immediately uh, understand the need of their components and the need of packaging and need of the logistics. And accordingly, he will communicate with the logistic and supplier team. So what we are trying to say is there are connected factories, okay? 3D printing, robotics, automation, these are basically the uh, opportunities I am trying to tell you that are coming in the manufacturing area. So connected factory, although it is not a um, something hardware or asset, but it is definitely uh, some technology, maybe software developed technology that will uh, enable the uh, faster uh, implementation of manufacturing uh, ways automation, system integration, consulting, lean manufacturing, Six Sigma, 
industrial IoT for smart manufacturing. So this list of uh, opportunities are the important thing to understand at this moment so that we can prepare ourselves for the future uh, for your students basically or everyone around us. And uh, probably you need to also um, make yourself uh, understand about new technologies because most of you could be already in the teaching field or in your field for last 20 years and you need to uh, sharpen up your knowledge about the overall industry uh, what's new upcoming what's new is upcoming in the industry i will share something where you can learn new thing uh, towards the end of this presentation um, so lean manufacturing six sigma industrial iot these are the various opportunities now the next question could be how to learn this okay so for learning this you have a lot of free resources available on the internet you can just surf in the youtube and see a lot of new things uh, already available there if you just uh, you know google or put this connected factory on the um, youtube you will understand what are the new technology related to this how they are implemented what are the background courses or background opportunities uh, uh, background uh, uh, learnings you need to develop uh, for your you or your students i know few people who are in the uh, you know teaching industry and they are now switching to um, you know private uh, manufacturing industry after their 15 to 20 years uh, uh, you know teaching profession so it's not difficult now because the opportunities are everywhere only thing is we need to uh, have a right skills basically to understand uh, what needs to be learned to grab that opportunity Okay. So this is about industry 4.0 manufacturing area. I will not go into de details of it. Uh, these terms will come to you even in a later slide. So logistics is a very, very, very impacted area because of IoT 4.0. All the uh, transportation systems like you know uh, shipping, airport, road transport, they all are connected. So import and export laws. So since the industry is a lot of uh, demanding new and new faster ways to connect with each, uh, you know, each, each country, there is a need to understand import and export laws of the every, every soil. So uh, earlier, uh, earlier the company just to make sure that their supply uh, team is nearby. They should not be located in you know other countries. But now uh, companies are making sure that their suppliers could be anywhere in the world, but the time to reach to them should be minimum. Hey, Export loss. And this is one of the opportunity. And you will get a lot of uh, uh, new articles uh, available on the internet to understand this. Uh, just for example, encode terms uh, 2020. So encode terms mean um, terms means. Uh, the uh, relationship between various countries with respect to you know selling and uh, purchasing laws. So Inco Terms 2020 is a recent uh, release by uh, global organizations, uh, global authority who takes care of uh, uh, logistics within the countries. And this this is also one of the area uh, where a lot of people do consulting. Consulting, a lot of new companies are emerging who are helping. Uh, people to you know do transportation from one country to another country for export and import foreign transport policies so it is also a part of enco terms so foreign transport policies what material should be uh, sent to another country what should be the weight of it what will be the ingredient of it what kind of a certifications are needed so these are the various areas that needs to be learned and then implemented accordingly multimodal transportation so multimodal transportation means earlier i think i already gave an example so earlier there was only one transport i mean china to india was a sea and from sea to some other <clears throat> location there is to be truck transport but now with the invent of various 4.0 uh, technologies now the person sitting in china can decide whether he wants to take the material to nander directly Obviously, it will connect various more models of the transportation, but he can understand at the one click what are the various transportation models are available to connect with uh, any global location. So multimodal transportation, warehousing, <coughs> packaging, engineering. So with the invent of the fast uh, turnover time for the uh, supply, there is a need of warehousing. It should be located at the right place. Mostly it happens in 
uh, nearby to the sea areas because the sea transportation is quite cheaper than air transportation or road transportation. So, um, I mean, I particularly handle some of the locations for my office, which is in Netherlands, uh, Rotterdam. So, from US, China, and India, we bring all the materials over there. We understand, we know, we know at any point in time, uh, what all, you know, uh, parts are available and who should be the buyer of those parts. So who will place the order? So all that information is available with us. Warehousing. So this is about warehousing and packaging. Obviously, since we have reduced our turnaround time, the packaging has to be robust and economical. That is also more important because it should not create waste. Uh, the additional packaging should not create waste. So that is one opportunity uh, that we are seeing in the logistics area of the uh, 4.0. Uh, next, I am taking you to life sciences. Okay, so now life sciences is about medical science and you might ask why this life sciences is being discussed with engineers. So this is, I think, important part of the uh, engineering also nowadays. Uh, engineering and medical science are always talked together so that they complement each other, they understand each other needs uh, and technically uh, some solution needs to be found out to help doctors also, you know, to find out, uh, particular to, to diagnose particular things. So biochips, uh, genetic studies, forensic sciences, medical instruments and machinery, uh, artificial intelligence. So these are the various uh, sectors or you know uh, opportunities i would say that is available in the life science or medical industry uh, every 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 aspect or the every opportunity need to be discussed thoroughly uh, right now i cannot talk uh, all of it, all of it because i don't have a lot of uh, expertise in these areas at the moment but i learned from many people that uh, even after engineering most of the people try to you know study about medical science and instruments artificial intelligence that goes with the medical science and there are special courses available all across the world. So this is the opportunity in uh, medical and life science. Uh, the last one is software technology and this is uh, interesting to all of you I'm sure. So you have already heard about ERP, IoT, digital digitalization and artificial intelligence. So right now in, in, in industry we are trying to implement all of this. So certain things are already there. So Artificial intelligence is the one area where every company is very much interested uh, and the machine learning also. So most recently metaverse or augmented reality uh, is a latest uh, area of the software technology. So it talks about uh, even without going to some other place, you will realize how, how, how something it looks like. So uh, you can see this, my pointer, this is about augmented reality or metaverse. It talks about uh, a thing which is in front of you, uh, which you cannot, uh, you cannot probably feel, but you can see the 3D model of that particular thing or a person with whom you are interacting. So augmented reality, metaverse and cyber physical system. So these are various opportunities. One thing to note here is with invent of lot of technology, we are also going to see lot of violation of these things. So this violation will happen in medical industry, mechanical industry, and even in the software industry. So there need there is a need of policing that this this you know problem. So uh, with the good things, some bad things will also come. You know, like we have a software, but we have a viruses to corrupt those software. So similarly, all the people who are inventing new things, there are some people, some nasty people who want to invent bad you know who can corrupt uh, the overall system so there is a cyber cyber physical system need as well everywhere so uh, nowadays if you see the syllabus of uh, uh, laws you will also say cyber security law uh, cyber physical system law and all kind of uh, uh, learnings are already part of our legal system now so that is also one good area you can learn at any point in time uh, but it is important to understand that these are the various opportunities and which one you would like to choose. So it is not possible to everyone to you know uh, get into all the uh, you know you know on, on all the ways. So software is a low hanging fruit, I would say, because right now 
uh, in my view, another 30, 25 to 30 years, most of the things which we are using for last 200, 300 years after the invention of you know, steel and manufacturing industry, uh, these things are still not automated. So robotics, and to support those robotics, we need uh, IoT, digitization, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data analytics, real-time analytics, cloud computing. So in my opinion, probably this could be the very good industry to look at it for another 20, 25 years. But this is just a support system. This will be a service system. The original asset will be mechanical engineering, civil engineering, electronics engineering, which is a base of everything. Software could be just one part, which, which will enable the things automatically, but without the core of the engineering, it won't be possible. So I think although there is opportunity in software, there are equal opportunities in other core industries as well. Uh, right, so let us talk about skills now. And here I am actually going to uh, diverge myself to some different area of the uh, today's topic. So what skills you need for 4.0 era? In my opinion, it is not just a technical skill. The more important skill is human skill, smart living skill, entrepreneurial skill. So every new disruption gives you job opportunities as well as an opportunity to think about what is a different living standard I can bring to myself, I can give it to society. So there is opportunity for entrepreneurial uh, development as well. There is opportunity for technical development, as I mentioned, you know, in the automotive industry or any manufacturing industry. But the important thing is human skills, smart skills, and entrepreneurial skill apart from the technical skills. And I will talk to you about which are the human skills are needed uh, for, uh, you know, going or facing the situation of industry 4.0. Okay, so for in, in human skills, so these days when I interact with the uh, students, those are coming out of colleges, I realize that they could have, they can have a good technical knowledge, but they somewhere lack in human skills. Probably the reason is internet because they are learning a lot of things from internet and they avoid learning new things from, uh, you know, people per se. So that they should have a, ability to decode the acumen of technology. It is not just, you know, understanding the technology, but they should understand the application that of the technology. And for that, they need to interact with people. They need to network with people, which is lagging. They should be able to embrace the innovation so that whatever new innovation is coming into the industry, they have to look at it, absorb it, and try and implement it. They should also, you know, develop contextual implement when, for any any kind of a discussion or any topic, they should have some kind of a understanding. It could not be, uh, it could be new, but they have to research. They should be uh, truthful about what is new coming to them. In my view, uh, the most important thing uh, in a human skill is listening. So what I have uh, observed is these days, people have lost their listening skill, particularly students because they get distracted uh, many time and you must have heard uh, uh, 0.8 seconds is the minimum uh, you know uh, time span usually I read on the internet basically uh, people or students want to stay on any any website and they quickly make the change over unless they stay there for some time they will not be able to you know grasp that so these are few more skills human skills what I'm trying to say they should be inculcated in themselves which is needed for the uh, readiness for their industry 4.0 uh, when they are facing basically 4.0 industry. How they can learn? Uh, the most important thing is mentoring. We need, they have to be uh, mentored right uh, with the right people. Basically, they should come to the people for asking mentorship because it is not just technology or YouTube that gives you everything. There are always a people behind giving you right advice, right technology, because they bring their experience with them. Um, in, I mean, particularly what I feel is if you learn anything on Google or internet, it is something which is already existing in the world. But if you want to invent something new, it has to be always coming from a discussion or from a networking. Uh, any new invention that cannot come on Google, 
if it is on the google that means it is already existing in the world so it is important to interact network with the people so uh, in learning skill i have also added traveling i have traveled across the world and i realized traveling gives you immense opportunity to learn new things we understand people we understand technology we understand environment so traveling is very good opportunity to learn new things uh, and you know so that you can face the uh, new industry and networking so working with various people interacting with them uh, trying to understand new things uh, any 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 person random person there is no need that they should be interacting with a similar field person so even if you interact with someone who is a medical field engineer is interacting with medical then he will realize there is a need of you know engineering in the medical science similarly if you are interacting with someone who is in the entertainment industry for example so entertainment industry will need a various you know machines to uh, capture their videos probably or you know they need huge setup how to make that setup so there is a requirement everywhere so there is a need to interact travel and network with people so online tools are already available i am just adding for the sake of you know uh, since it is one of the tool to under learn new skills so online tools you know very well there are a lot of websites available globally uh, which can give you online education and um, youtube is a very good uh, uh, university now uh, i am not talking about whatsapp university uh, you will get a lot of fake things from lots of uh, whatsapp uh, technical skills so uh, i just kept this uh, slide very blank because i don't know what to put here in technical skills you can learn a lot of things in the individual area so like if somebody is working in mechanical engineering he can learn about digitization he can learn about uh, cad related thing 3d printing related machine uh, you know data science data computing uh, real time analysis big data analysis etc if somebody is in civil so probably he can understand about structural uh you know structural digitization uh, cad related things uh, if somebody is into electronics industry he can understand about uh, semiconductor so uh, these are the individual skills related to that particular technology but to <clears throat> encompass this into industry 4.0 you need to understand everything about all of this i mean there is no need to just uh, you know decide one path and continue with that you will have to you will have to learn few more things coming from different industries and all that industry uh, knowledge has to be you know combined together to develop something new so that's the reason technical skill slide is blank here uh, i don't have anything to put specific but you can see a php word uh, html so these are all software related things i i am not just talking about software but industry 4.0 deals with all the uh, uh, various fields of the industry as i mentioned earlier mechanical engineering uh, software engineering electronics engineering and civil engineering as well so technical skills can be discussed in a length but i i don't have that much uh, you know appreciation to this particular topic in other industry obviously with the mechanical industry i can talk more uh, one of the important skill that comes to us is entrepreneurial skill what i think is industry 4.0 is bringing giving us a very big opportunity to uh, think about new opportunities uh, going into the next decade i would say for now because after 2020 or 2021 we are in the next decade and this decade is going to bring lot of new things about industry new things about automation and technology and this is also the opportunity for the people even they could be a college graduates they can think of uh, uh, establishing new industry so the skills for entrepreneurship i am trying to list here is decision making confidence risk bearing capacity uh, willingness to change foresightness ambitions and dynamics so uh, i think these are not the new skills that you see here but it is also important to understand that they all should be combined together so that something new can be formed or new can be uh, you know invented out of the people around us so i i am a great advocate for uh, any student or anybody who wants to uh, start their entrepreneurial journey 
uh, I am always uh, available to talk to any you know student or faculty if they want to understand more about this. Uh, apart from my uh, you know technical or my uh, basically professional knowledge. So I think this is all I'm talking, uh, I'm going to end here, but in the bonus, I'm going to tell you something uh, where uh, people can learn the new skills. So here are three very well-known uh, Sorry. Sorry? Sir, screen is not the screen. Is not the screen. Is not the screen. Uh, is it better now? Is it better now? Is it better now? Is it better now? Screen is better now. Come in the internet range. Okay. So, uh, screen is better now. Okay. So, I am almost on the last slide now. So, this is a, I would say, bonus information because uh, these are three websites. Uh, apart from some of the Indian website that you learn new things, these are very well-known website. These two are sort of an NGO and they are run by um, some of the American societies, edx.org and coursera.org, as you can see with the name ORG, that means they are, there are courses available at a very cheaper rate, hardly 300, 400 rupees for one course. Uh, Udemy is also one of the nice platform. You can learn a lot of new things. So there is a need to, you know, always sharpen our skills and I do it this way. I, I do it with EDS, I do it with Udemy or Coursera, I do various courses. I don't think that it is necessary to only learn technical skills or you know any uh, specific skill, but I do learn a lot of behavioral skill, uh, human understandings or uh, any shopping uh, related skill, any digital uh, technology related skill. So you can uh, you know hop into these websites and uh, most importantly, some of the websites give courses for free and they are taught by international uh, lecturers from some Harvard University, Boston University, MIT University, if you go to this EDX probably. And if you just want, if you want a certification, then you will have to pay that amount. Uh, until that, uh, you can get the you know, knowledge free of cost. And since anyway, you are using internet very well, I don't think it is difficult to you know, uh, go to this website and learn new things. So this was a bonus information for you. Uh, I think that's it. I'm done with my content for industry 4.0 opportunities. If you have any questions, please feel free to discuss. Yeah, any questions? Vinod, I'm yes, here. Ah. Good afternoon. Very nice Good to afternoon. see you again. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Nicely covered all the topics. Very good. Uh, dear participants, uh, would request you to have, if you have any queries, please ask. I'm you anyway want? open to, uh, you know, even if you have question uh, later, you can talk to me. Uh, you can talk to me on my interest on traveling. You can talk to me on my interest about career choosing, uh, various courses or the you know right ways to uh, face interviews. Uh, I do mentor many people for their career guidance or if they have any kind of a uh, query related to their career choosing or technology, uh, this thing. Uh, I'm always available. I have given my number and email ID. Uh, if, if anyone have question, they can reach out to me. Yeah. Any queries, please? So my question is... Okay, Mr. Arun Mishram, please go ahead. Uh, my question is, the industry 4.0, uh, uh, which revolution take the, uh, which software are uh, introduced? for the artificial artificial languages so uh, right now what i understand is probably most of the places they are using uh, python uh, is one of the language they are using uh, php they are using some of the android technologies but in depth the details of that particular uh, area is different so if somebody wants to develop a, a software that will interact with um, uh, um, I would say the two machines, then it will have 
C, it will also have Java, it will have some SQL database. So uh, it depends on what kind of a technology you want to you know, implement or what kind of a relationship or integration you want to have. Sir, my next question is, uh, what is the uh, difference between automation and industry 4.0? Okay, so industry 4.0 is also an automation, but here in industry 4.0, apart from the automation, we are also connecting various machines. So imagine there is a manufacturing line. I can show you a picture already in my presentation. Uh, there is a manufacturing line here. So the uh, you know robot at the last and robot at the first will are interconnected. Earlier, what used to happen? There was a command only given to this robot who is probably uh, welding the panels of the vehicle, but right now the same command is connected across the all robotics and when this is finished, then the next session will start act action. What used to happen, you know, earlier, the time period uh, for particular robot and its efficiency, imagine if any one robot is not working fine or it has some errors, then this error used to get carried forward until the last station. So what is happening now with industry 4.0 implementation, you can understand what is a fault in that particular machine. Uh, you know, we call it preventive maintenance in our books language. So that all is taken care and the software will give you an alert that this machine could work slow or there is a need of preventive maintenance. Uh, there is some kind of a wear and tear in that particular machine. So the robotics and 4.0 is same, but four point in 4.0 robotics has taken a new leap uh, so that uh, it works more efficiently for the today's needs. I hope I answered the question. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, nice. Nicely explained, Vinod, uh, uh, sir. Anybody know? Yes. Nath, sir. No. Professor Navnath wants to ask us. Hello. Ah, yeah, yeah, please sir, go on. Uh, I have said what, what type of career opportunities have uh, mechanical engineers in metaverse, blockchain, artificial intelligence? Okay. Yeah, I can, I, can, I can explain this. Okay, so Metaverse is nothing but the virtual reality and virtual reality is, uh, uh, is already something exists. So it is all about software, but in softwares also virtual re reality will be, uh, I think I have a good picture about it somewhere. Okay, here it is. So in virtual reality, mechanical engineers can, they will have to learn some software technologies. There are various jobs, like if I want to tell you, uh, about softwares, there are some consulting jobs, there are some artificial intelligence or machine learning related uh, courses available in the free environment on the uh, YouTube as well. And you can learn from uh, various, you know, uh, I would say uh, universities or open universities uh, on the internet. So metaverse and augmented reality is actually an engineer's job. So to to, to take part in that kind of opportunity, I think some additional skills are needed, which could be coding related things. I don't know uh, which is a particular course somebody will have to do uh, when they are dealing with metaverse, but some coding knowledge, some artificial intelligence related uh, courses he will have to do, and then probably he can enter into that area. But uh, you, you will see engineers are everywhere, even if there are uh, you know, in software industry, I know people from civil engineering has also uh, come, uh, people from mechanical engineering as well as chemical engineering working as a software engineer. So it becomes easier, particularly to the mechanical engineer to adopt even the software uh, knowledge very quickly. So uh, software people are most preferred, pe uh, mechanical engineering people and uh, technology people are most preferred even in early software developments. For presenting a practical perspective, uh, Vinod sir, thank you. Uh, it is my uh, 
uh, may I tell the audience that uh, in past 32 years, uh, many students have undergone, uh, I mean, they have been taught by us uh, and uh, Mr. Vinod Ajankar is a gem among them. It is always uh, a wonderful uh, experience to hear from him. His journey is simply uh, amazing. May I now request our co-coordinator, Honorable Shri Kulkarni sir, to express a vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, Ajankar sir, Vinod. Uh, it was a very uh, important lecture which was throwing the lights on the various areas of uh, Industry 4.0. And what is the impact of this Industry 4.0 in mechanical industries? Of course, the educational institutes also, because the impact of that on the educational yes. institute uh, is uh, making our students to gear up for uh, this uh, Industry 4.0. Uh, to meet the challenges and to bring the technical skills in that. So a lot of areas uh, you, you have explained in very neat and simple manner, uh, which will be very useful. This uh, lecture will be very useful for us. Uh, in fact, uh, this is the lecture uh, which directly it can be uh, shared with the students. So we have also a recording of this. So yeah. definitely this lecture will help us uh, with all of our, our students uh, throughout the state because uh, all the faculties here are there, which are from yeah. different uh, institutes, very experienced uh, and uh, the curious faculties are there, which were here into you. So this knowledge will help us to understand the importance of industry 4.0, their various areas, technical skills, just like Udemy, Coursera, all these uh, are the tools which are uh, improving our uh, uh, room. Uh, definitely, uh, this uh, lecture is having the impact uh, on the Industry 4.0, the skills of our diploma students also. So thank you uh, very much, uh, Vinod Ajankar, for uh, sharing the, your knowledge. Uh, in a very good manner. Oh, we like thank to you, sir. lecture very much. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank sir, you. I want the, to yeah. I want to appreciate yeah. the vision. You know, for choosing this subject. Uh, this yeah. is really a futuristic subject, and I think um, uh, student and lecturers will give very different perspective about the industry. Uh, this is upcoming. I mean, you know, yeah. although we are talking this for last ten years, but. The implementation and the discussion is started just yeah. recently about this topic. So this is a beginning. There are a lot of new things to learn. And most importantly, learning is not impossible in these days. So, uh, <laughs> so everybody can you know, learn things online. They can sharpen their skills. They can, because what I'm seeing is a lot of people are getting redundant because of not learning new things. I'm not sure in the education industry, but at least in the private industry, many people, they, they don't learn. Uh, there are good chances that they can sit home <laughs> and relax. <laughs> so, and, and yeah. more important is the time span. Where in your lecture we were talking about, uh, you have seen this 3D printing 10 or 12 years uh, mm, before, and yes. still now we are struggling for that exactly. skills in the 3D. Which language is used for that? Yes. Uh, yes. Definitely, we are not know knowing that. Uh, definitely, knowledge is there which is having importance when you get that within the time span right. afterwards <laughs> definitely this lecture will induce all of us to get mm -hmm. uh, that knowledge within the required time yes. because this will not stop for anybody uh, at any stage yes so yes. definitely uh, your so, words I have also I have also insisted on three other things other than technology, which is you know entrepreneurship, yeah. uh, uh, mentoring, and yeah. the collaboration or networking. So Sakar Kare Sir was my uh, professor for uh, I think entrepreneurship, and yeah. I, uh, I I mean I I learned from him you know my yeah. lessons basically, and these are important skills for all the professors all as well. Unless we interact. Uh, with the student or student interacting within themselves and the people from different orbits, uh, they cannot learn new things. Traveling is very important for all of us. 
Uh, everybody yeah. should travel. I don't say just travel globally, but you can travel locally and learn new things. That is really yeah. important. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Sir. Excellent Thank views. You. You know, we appreciate this. Thank, Thank you. Sir. Uh, and looking forward to again hearing you for our students. We shall arrange an expert. Sure, Thank you Absolutely. once again. No problem, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. And Thank you. Have Thank a great you. session. Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks you. Lot. To see our students grooming in this fashion. Uh, may I tell our uh, participants that the next lecture is to be delivered by a very senior professor of VNIT, Dr. Abhay Kuthe, sir. And that is dedicated to 3D printing and Atmanirbhar Bharat perspective. So uh, please uh, join at 325. Please, all participants, please do, uh, do join for the last session of the day. Thank you once again. Thank you, Vinod. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. And thank you all. Yeah. Thank you. So we much. shall, yeah. We shall uh, end the session here. Okay.